Assalamu alaikum. Good evening everyone. This is Sherar Sikandar and I am back with another interesting and informative session. Uh, the topic for today's read talk is uh, the loud reading versus silent reading. Before going to start a proper session, I'm so excited to introduce you to our honorable guest, Sir Dr. Asan Rahman. A tremendous personality with lots of achievements and experiences. Uh, if we talk about his qualifications, Sir has done his master's in English literature from University of Karachi in uh, 1979 uh, and master's in English lit uh, linguistics uh, from the same university uh, in 1984. Afterwards, he went to UK um, and did his MS from the University of London in 2007. And finally, uh, his doctorate, completed his doctorate from International Islamic University in 2013. He has got multiple distinctions as a, a gold medalist in master's uh, program from University of Karachi. He also won the British Council Scholarship and studied in a United uh, and the University of uh, London uh, on Open Merit Scholarship. Uh, Sir has 34 years of teaching experience and has been an official proofreader for PhD thesis since 2019. Uh, he has lifelong experience of teaching, uh, the reading skills, the writing skills, the stylistics, uh, and the English syntax at university level. Uh, Sir, you are most, most welcome uh, on the behalf of Read Pakistan, and I'm so grateful to have you uh, in this wonderful evening. Thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm so glad with this uh, devoted institution to, you know, to join because you have a cause. Your very name is inspiring. And for that, I was, uh, I was also delighted to be part of this program, you know, because our whole life would like to mean something. And when there is something to contribute, I'm always pleased to extend as much help as I can. So I hope you will find this session as much as beneficial as uh, I, I can try and make it, inshallah. <laughs> and I hope that the people who are interested in reading, and I will say how and why they should be interested in reading, which is such a decadent you know, uh, skill in Pakistan. So I'm going to talk, going to talk on this, inshallah. Uh, I begin in the name of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has given us the first word of the wahi, which was Iqra. So I, sh I would say, inshallah, we will elaborate on this very topic as much as possible. Reading is the most important skill. As we said, uh, this uh, this uh, slogan was introduced by me to the students. Or readers are the okay, readers. Sir, uh, sir, um, sir, we are so honored. We are so honored to have you, sir. We are so honored. Uh, Thank you very much. So, uh, should I now start with the uh, presentation? Uh, should I begin with it now? Uh, should I begin, Shahir Sahib? Am I? Of course, sir. Of course, you can. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, it is one of the most important uh, skills because it it leads us to the exploration of the whole world of knowledge. Uh, sir, my voice and, is lagging, sir. So you can start it. Okay. Thank you very much. So. As I said, readers are the leaders. Uh, the Holy Quran begins with the word Iqra, read. And this shows the importance. And all the Muslims, you know, they are very well aware of this, uh, uh, this uh, very, uh, you know, important saying of the Holy Quran. But that is in theory, you know. As for theory is concerned, it's okay. But in practice, we don't see much of reading in the Muslim world, and which is something very unfortunate so we we will inshallah 
talk about this topic in more detail when we say that uh, uh, every society you know it aims to to it, to give importance uh, to the development of its uh, itself and to de develop it and to run to run in the long run towards the sign of victory you, you see every society every culture aims to get to the sign of victory rather than uh, something to be defeated so every society should aim to create readers and to li create libraries and bookshops and cultivate reading habit and encourage readers and writers and authors and publishers printers and other relevant logistics which are related to reading this is a this is such an important thing so uh, we say that actually at the nucleus of the whole phenomena lies the enthusiastic reader the focus of all these activities on an enthusiastic reader you know who who would like to explore things as who, a reader who is actually ready to invest his time money and attention Read. on reading this is uh, only when you you are convinced that you are getting something out of it if you are convinced then of course your precious time will be devoted to reading you will pay money you will buy books and you will never think that this the books are expensive if you are a if you are a reader this is important you know uh, our culture is a bit different in these regards uh, we think that books are expensive but this actually is not the issue the issue is that we are not readers and i have seen readers who can pay you know uh, whatever they have on reading but all that depends on how enthusiastic you are it's important but before that you have to have you have to develop a, an interest in reading in, to such a degree that you feel that this is something important and that this is something worth doing let me quote ibn khaldun he said a country whose libraries are full of readers has a bright future so you see a country whose libraries are full of readers has a bright future and in my parallel saying to the same and that which i quote um, to my students and i have always done that and i say that a country whose hotels are full you know that has a very bleak future mind it is very important yeah this is something that i'm not going to go into detail but that's that is a parallel which i have of course after inspiration from ibn khaldun i have said the same thing to my students and they are witness to it so i would like to look at the uh, state and development state of uh, the development of the reader in the classroom with reference to the reading skill you see classroom is is the factory where you can develop readers or you know non readers more more importantly here it is you are, you can breed readers or you can kill them it's very important to understand that the difference between the two so i that, that's why when i say, uh, put the title that it is a loud reading versus uh, silent reading it's not a debate between the two it's a technical precise understanding of both these things because uh, i will make it clear in this lecture that whether loud reading is of any benefit or no i was also very pleased with the question when I, the question was put that some people want to keep loud reading so i will prove that loud reading is basically not reading but it's an exercise in fluency so fluency belongs to speaking not to uh, reading and nobody would like to be a fast reader or to like uh, articulate words so you can read we can read a text even without articulating a word you know that we can do complete silent reading uh, the the thing that we have to differentiate between is that when we are correcting the pronunciation of a student when he is uh, uh, reading it wrong at that time when we are doing so we are of course we are doing a good job but that's not reading uh, that's not reading yeah that's not related to the reading skill that's related to the spoken language skill oral skill so 
most important thing is that the leaders are developed in the classroom uh, and the student there is waiting to be groomed how the teacher grooms him is very important uh, the teacher can make or break and if the reader is developed if the reader is encouraged if the reader is convinced that you know he can do it no then then he will be on the path of discovery of himself uh, some people when they ask me to recommend a book for reading i say that this this is this is very easy to to do that but if i recommend a book i am not go i'm not sure that you would read it the thing is that reading or a reader is dependent on his own interest he has to explore the world of knowledge the world of books and he has to explore himself through reading so it's a it's a journey in self discovery when he does it then he finds something and he buys it or he goes to library or he will you know uh, get issue a book but he will make all the efforts to get that book and he will wait for a book to come out he will even search for a book to come out the book may not be there but he may be looking for a particular book in a particular uh, uh, shop you know whatever uh, is available he will be just looking and browsing because he is basically a reader so let's go to this uh, uh, presentation which is basically research based you know it is based on the research is conducted under my supervision at the uh, uh, at ma level and uh, at the islamic university islamabad and also at the mphil level studies so this is something which is related to research i would not like to share my whimsical opinion no not at all whatever is technical i would like to say and whatever is not non technical i would like to avoid we begin read in the name of your lord so let's talk about to the topic loud reading versus silent reading see what is loud reading this is a popular uh, activity in the traditional classroom uh, every class teacher whenever he is asked to uh, to read a lesson or to help students read a lesson you know he asks the student one by one to read aloud and it is such an interesting activity and it is such an enthusiastic activity that the students feel that they are participating uh, they think that they are doing something and it motivates and everybody you know the student may in the beginning and it can be noted and it has been noted that they are so motivated in the beginning they raise their hands to participate in the reading uh, session so it is seems that the student will get, get a chance or every student will get a chance to read uh, that's why it uh, looks easy for the teacher as well as for the uh, student now what happened what happens physically in the i have dissected this what happens physically in the class and this is done again with the help of researchers who have been in the field that a student is asked to read allowed and he stands up he is made to stand uh, almost all the time and the others are listening so the reading the reading goes on so that the student is making utterances of the words on the page like he is giving voice to the words on the page then what happened that the teacher the teacher feels is his bound duty to carefully listen and not to let go any wrong pronunciation mind it i'm saying pronunciation so is it's important for the teacher to interrupt the student and correct his pronunciation wherever he is wrong now see that pronunciation belongs to the speaking skill and not to the reading skill so we have to separate the two however uh, the, the there is no set criteria whether he is correcting uh, aspiration or he is correcting a uh, long elongating of the vowel or cor correcting the 
voicing or the devoicing which is part of all all this part of uh, pronunciation or the stresses on the word no if the student is unaware so the teacher uh, he interrupts and the two conditions are that if the teacher is less attentive then anything could pass in between for example if he is busy in doing something then he will ask one student to stand up and read and then he will ask them to one by one participate in the whole activity but if he is attentive what happens is that he could he would stop and interrupt anywhere so here it's it has been noted that whenever a student is reading aloud he doesn't understand anything his mind is busy in vocalizing the words and his uh, reading comprehension is very low at that at that level so in that case the student who is reading is at the podium he is on the top and he is the uh, the center of concentration or the center of attention for all so he may not stammer he may not hesitate and he has to do a flow of reading uh, with correct pronunciation or the standardized pronunciation as and or as understood by the teacher so he is stopped for whatever correction is needed at the first instance when he is stopped he gets conscious and at the, that correction he, he you know after consciousness he you know when we become conscious we make more mistakes so we may the student is made conscious and he makes more mistakes and then of course the teacher gets even louder in his uh, voice he reprimands or you know in a way it results in shame and disgust and insult we can say to the to that degree so he would get the teacher will also get uh, irritated and the student gets frustrated and also uh, insulted at the end the next Sorry student the would get but, uh, up to here, here is a question sir yes welcome yes, sir uh, the, like you talked about the loud reading uh, so uh, isn't it like this that the loud reading is uh, more about the uh, speaking skills uh, or something like uh, about confidence uh, but not specifically about learning uh, uh, will you like to shed light on this yeah actually what i'm what i'm trying to say is that when we are talking about reading we have to concentrate upon the reading skill so that we develop the reading skill and we make our student a reader you get my point that he exactly. explores the reading text rather exactly. than yeah rather than we talk about his his uh, uh, speaking skill or something you know uh, his two things need to be separated separate because uh, for example yeah the, the separation is important you know we don't say that we do away with loud reading it may be needed at time but what we are trying to say in loud reading we are actually not doing reading at all we are speaking it we are articulating it and the other students are listening they are not reading so the slide will make when when we go ahead inshallah it will be further clear answered or i will come to it in a whole uh, holistic manner okay sir sir so the question is so, now about it it's like sir uh, sorry for the interruption sir it's so okay my question welcome. is uh, Okay, sir. So my question is uh, like a general one. That first we must look into the uh, reading thing. That uh, one, uh, how one should make himself engaged in. So, so uh, we know that the reading is an interactive and constructive process. So, what are some prerequisites or crucial exercises or drills or activities which you believe one should keep yeah. himself engaged in for the purpose to become a good reader? Yeah. First, we will generally look at. Then we will go into the um, uh, loud reading and the silent reading in detail, specifically okay. as we talk about. Okay, so, so I I hope that uh, uh, is uh, you know is, is it okay now if I continue or do you want me to answer? This yes, sir. Yes, now? no. So just continue, sir. Okay. Oh, thank you. So the point is that if the reader is already a good loud reader, it's okay. that means that he is already developed and the, the teacher is not doing anything important for him 
but if he is not then he is meeting a harsher judgment from his already frustrated teacher and ends in further humiliation so see this psychological impact on the student and this is like uh, an activity which is a uh, uh, which has its repercussion in the long term it's important to note that so the other students are either passive uh, or they are disinterested this also has been noted that either the students are not even attentive to the whole activity they are doing something else or they are turning pages or they are fearing the same reaction from the teacher now the other students now start fearing that if the teacher does the same with them what will happen to them so the the timid would hide their heads to completely avoid this uh, horrible horrible experience and their, that their friend was meeting so this is you see like you know this is a step in meters you get the point just as yes sir, sir. Uh, sir, sir talked about uh, yeah. uh, actually the uh, stigma attached to it and the embarrassment that a student feel in exactly. class exactly exactly so, yes, yeah and this is because the because the student is learning he's a learner he's a very conscious being he's a very conscious being and especially uh, among his peer he he doesn't want to be humiliated this is very important for us to understand the psychology yes, so he is a very sophisticated being yes exactly thank you very much so you see uh, what happens is that the overall experience of such a reading is frustration insult and injury to the student it has had long lasting effects on the psychology of students <laughs> without the teachers realizing it it's very important that the teacher doesn't understand what's happening so the student gradually associate pain injury to the reading experience and are embarrassed <laughs> at the sight of a book in later period of his life exactly so students Please. slowly begin to hate books and reading and they develop yeah. into non readers which you have yeah. noted in our society yeah. yeah nobody enters a bookshop nobody enters a bookshop what to talk about paying money and investing money in the books and so on and so forth because uh, reading uh, reading is uh, dealt in this way you can see in your whole society that bookshops are being closed while in in place of bookshops you have fashion shops you have shawarma shops you have food Many shops other replacing bookshops uh, yeah shoe shoe shops of being opened isn't it tragic brother exactly. isn't it tragic yes yeah. and this is this is related something to the Safe painful truth. experience that we, we have had yeah. and the result is that you will see educated people if you ask them how many books have you read last year and they will just you know they will just try to Reply avoid no. it yeah because you have had this awesome. experience Sir, so, uh, let me to, let me ask uh, something uh, particularly about these both that in our society exists both uh, type of people like both the silent and loud reading have their own pros and cons. So, do you think one can yeah. replace the other, or both should go alongside? Because a substantial number of people are silent readers, and they seem reluctant to the loud readers. And mm -hmm. same goes for the loud readers as well at the yeah. same time. So see, how uh, readers, how readers will keep be a balance between, by, between, the, uh, between the reading the class has to be replaced by silent reading as quickly as possible to develop readers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said that uh, the the loud reading is not part of reading at all. Nobody reads a novel allowed nobody even reads this uh, newspaper allowed nobody you know if the, we are talking about the holy quran then people are doing kalawa that is something completely different otherwise you haven't uh, heard of a man who is reading a novel from uh, beginning till end allowed you see it's uh, it's not done yes plays are read aloud is true but that's an acting that's part of acting that's not reading at all that's articulation and that's part of acting 
So what I mean to say that silent reading, I, I now I'm coming to silent reading and how it works and how the participation immediately goes into 100% by students. While in loud reading, which was not basically reading class at all, but whatever the activity was, only one student was reading it in the sense of the teacher even. But thing, you know, so you see the difference. Now, we, when we come to silent reading, you will see that silent reading is an, an aspect of reading that slowly leads to reading skill as a pleasant world of discovery. As a pleasant world of world discovery. Of uh, the, you start yeah, uh, yes, uh, making imagination at the same time when you read it, a particular exa uh, scenario you create in your mind. Exactly. Exactly. That's why we said that the teacher should never explain the text to students beforehand. You know, if the teacher explains the whole text or the story to students, then why should the students read it? You know, because the students who are or are supposed to be on the path of a, a discovery. If the discovery is made to them already, then it's no fun. To, to read and, and, to and they are going and they are they going have... to put no effort uh, if uh, the discovery has been and, made yeah. to them already. Exactly, exactly. And this is what I have noted myself during my learning experience that the teacher used to say, okay, let me give you the summary of the text before so that you can understand the text well. Okay, then the whole game of fun, the discovery fun is gone from the whole experience. So that is the thing that no, you shouldn't explain the text before. You should let the student discover it themselves, you know. Uh, so please note that. Exactly. So the major experience of reading, uh, reading is silent. It is natural. It is natural. Nobody reads a novel aloud. Reading could happen without even uttering a single word. Loud reading is done by newscasters alone and they require special training which is a specialized field and requires special training and aptitude, both. So silent at the pace and interest level of the reader, which is natural. Yeah, every reader has his own pace. There are certain people who want to like, would like to read fast, students who would like to read, you know, slowly. So let them read at their own possible to make it as natural as possible for them because we are developing readers. I hope you get this point so far. Yes, I, 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 I got it. Great. I got it. Sa yes, Thank you. Sir, silent, uh, silent. Yes, please. Uh, sir, sir I was like, um, actually, uh, you have a lot of experience of teaching um, in this field. Sir, so reading is like not something that can be restricted only to curriculum. Uh, unfortunately, the irony is here. So how much do you think reading is important in general and how we can promote it in general that it's not uh, just about your course books that you just read and you know, close your book and your job is done. Uh, and what are the positive impacts that in general life it has on us uh, being a reader? You see, the, the thing that we are going to we were talking is that we are to develop a reader. A reader is a reader everywhere. In the classroom, there's less time for him. But outside, there's more time for him to explore. He is a reader. And that reader will find his own interests and his own liking and his own dislikings. So he will make choices from the books only if we develop the reader. I'm emphasizing this word again and again that we are to develop reader. And the reader will go and pick out money from his pocket and pay pay for a book you see and the book he likes and he goes and uh, invest his time and his energy on that because he's a reader right huh? does it does it make sense exactly. i mean to say that yes, it's not yes, restricted sir, sir. yes sir. yeah it's not restricted exactly. we are supposed but we to, must yeah. we must not we are, uh, give a, a kind of uh, like we must promote that uh, this is not the way that you limitize yourself to just to books, uh, your course books, because there are a lot to read. Uh, and this is so much uh, interesting habit if you develop it. 
exactly exactly yeah this is this can be done by practice not by preaching uh, this is what we are going to do you see in the in the silent uh, reading classroom we are to develop this into the student in such a manner that after the classroom he thinks that he is going to read further right from the classroom book now the things are left to him so that like it is it is just an introduction it is just a taste development uh, phenomena here we are developing a reader who will go out go to the library the school library or to the bookshop and find a book and then you know develop uh, you see reader readers club join readers club uh, go to uh, book exhibitions so like that you know he he has to go outside the world outside the world of classroom and become a reader so reader. when we say the silent reading can be done by all the students at a time independently as against solo loud reading that was done solo here the whole class is involved the whole class is given a task to read something to answer something which is like the, the answers are not there uh, like an exercise but the answers are only to check that they have read it we are only to make sure that they go through the go through the text and read the text if they have read the text they will uh, they will answer the question very easily that is the point exactly. we are not to make difficult questions or yeah very complex question on reading no but only to see that look the students are made at to read. the same time they will use their so, thinking ability and putting it uh, at this uh, at this variability in it and will uh, get outcome of it yeah that, that will be like next step you know when we are when we are done with the first stage that we are made made them read then the next step is that we connect the reading to their own personal life you know say how you, if you read a story about a boy who for example lost his ball then and he is hesitant to come back to his uh, parents then you will say okay what will, what happens that he is he is connecting the experience to his you get my point yes sir i got it sir thank you sir but uh, so this okay sir continue continue sir. Yes. Yes. The voice. If you are speaking now, then there is no voice. I don't know. Sometimes I don't get the voice. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Now, yes. Sir, um, there is a thing like uh, we are promoting uh, reading. We are uh, like designing the uh, ways for it. That how we can make good readers and how can we we uh, engage the, the ordinary people in reading sir um, ultimately eventually if we got lots of uh, readers in the society so uh, and uh, if um, it is like a general question that um, what a reader uh, is different in a general society than a non reader that what uh, it will give the the productive things that that uh, a, re a, a reader can be differentiated in a society from a non reader uh, what is the benefit of it for our for, for public at large and uh, as a as a as a better person in the society yeah you see uh, a reader a reader is a world of knowledge a reader learns how to reason and a reader is in contact with great scholars he gets the, uh, the touch of the great minds so you see you are getting higher and higher minds you see a, a reader is a better mind a reader who is reading of uh, great people or the the higher scholarship of course he is in touch or interacting with great scholars so you see he is he is always a better person than a non reader because non reader is making his own observations while the reader is making his observation through a certain reference so a, a reader is always better uh, and i will say that this is a whole culture you know a reader will promote a very healthy society because 
uh, if you are to promote good manners and good traditions, then you can refer people to good books. And when they are readers, they will read the good books and they will, you know, they will aim to become uh, the same person. So, for example, I give you the example of a, a great linguist who says that uh, reading provides an input to the mind. Mm. Reading provides input to the mind. So that input works on the mind and it is called the reading input. And the whole hypothesis is known as the input hypothesis. This input hypothesis is so important that if people get input from good books, they ultimately they become you know better and better. As you can see, Europe has uh, jumped uh, to a great extent uh, in the same field. They are always readers. You know, I have been to Europe and I have noted that when you go in the train or you are at the bus stop or even people at the uh, green signals or red signals or uh, traffic signals mm -hmm. you know, they, actually i was about to ask this question that uh, you have experienced in a foreign country as well so what are the basic differences between those peoples and our people we uh, are like it seems that our people waste much much of his time in daily on daily basis yeah we we because we are not used to it, number one and we are not uh, aware of the benefit our our minds you know we are we are feeding our stomachs again when i say that e eaters are losers because we are paying so much money on pizzas and burgers but when it comes to a book it seems so expensive to us while when we if we look at the book the book is read by me and then by my children and then my family and then by others and it is not it never finished you know so what what we are saying is that actually our association with reading is so embarrassing that we we think it's a, such an experience which we are we are uh, ready to do away with you know we are happy to do away with that experience. We think we are, our association has not been very good with reading. That's what I mean to say when I said that in the loud reading class, we are not developing readers. We are developing non-readers. That was the point. Mm -hmm. exactly. I hope yes. I'm... Yes. I, I got it. I got it. So sir, my point, but, uh, Okay, sir. So continue, sir. Yeah. My point is that, look, what happens in silent reading, I have just given the channel that the efficiency of the silent reading because the, the student or the reader, he, he saves his time and he is uh, involving uh, less of, lesser of his energies and this I'm going to present there that in the loud reading, loud reading involves signal from I. We first of all put our eye on the text. Now this this is this goes to the mind. And from there, after going to the mind, this comes to the uh, vocal organs. So we articulate it. And the, then it goes to the ear. And now the four channels, as you can see, four channels are involved here. Four steps are involved in this. And then from air and it brain. becomes a long a so long what? long distance uh, like a long yeah. wave uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, getting getting exactly, the, yeah. the very exactly. the very goal getting the very goal thanks yeah so all these are very unnecessary to involve this vocal organs and ears and all that again and again what, what we should have done is look i mind silent reading is i mind i mind i mind so easy mine. You get the point. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so quick, this is a quick learning procedure. Yeah, which you early said that you see that we have to understand. So this understanding comes because we are reading the text and we are putting it back to the mind. And this is interacting very quickly. So we are saving a lot of in-between energy. And we are, this, this reading is not tiring. And it's more efficient. That is the point that I'm trying to make that we have to understand this and what happens is that the teacher has to understand that he is making something which is more beneficial and more efficient you see huh? more uh, uh, beneficial 
and less time and energy consuming exactly so oh, um, actually, actually sir you more. you explained this that there is no such a, a comparison between both of them uh, while if we are yeah. to uh, we, we are to achieve our very goal of learning or getting in the information exactly. or get, really. or getting in knowledge so then the silent reading is yeah. the only reading that can be preferred and that can be done that can yeah. be promoted yeah 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 so uh, as i explained you see that this is consuming loud reading is consuming more energy that it is creating insult it is creating embarrassment and therefore at every step there is something that which is going against the whole activity so by by the teacher making it more painful ultimately what happens is that this uh, becomes a very discomforting experience for the person who has attempted it and the result is that as i have said that our we have now in our society very very highly educated non readers isn't it ironic you know exactly sir exactly yeah. this is the irony and this is yeah. a bitter truth yeah it is it is yes so when i when i saw your uh, um, read foundation you know i was uh, i said okay there are some people who are who begin Thank with the so word much. read so are, let's, yeah, let's we are working on it day and night sir yeah you are you are doing a wonderful job i'm i'm sure inshallah may god yes, bless you we have very, so, we are very well organized that, for it I'm from every now. institutions in every yes, university, yeah. universities and we also arrange yeah. these talks and live sessions yeah 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 so you see a loud reader now he needs an audience <laughs> you get the point so he is dependent yes, sir, where should we where should he get a, where should he get a, a you know an audience so he doesn't have an audience <laughs> and that's another negative thing so christine natal you may have heard of her this is a lady who has done who has written so many books on reading you know uh, it's a great name in the teaching of reading she is specialized in the reading especially reading in the foreign language so like this is more helpful for us who are promoting english language reading so she says what is reading and her definition is, is to enable students to read without help unfamiliar authentic text at appropriate speed silently and with adequate understanding teaching reading skill is the name of the book as a foreign language 1989 so you see the point look at the word the words are the word her words are great enable students to read without help nobody should help you know unfamiliar the text should be unfamiliar to them it should not be familiarized before and it should be authentic text it should not be written for the reading no it has been written already by authentic speakers or of the language maybe a novelist or a dramatist or whatever at appropriate speed appropriate means that let them uh, look at the speed that is required by the text and also required by the reader both silently and with adequate understanding adequate understanding not full understanding but the point is that how much understanding is required you know this is important to understand any question i hope then i can make no Um, I can give answer. Try. Really, sir, uh, you talked about this uh, very procedure that uh, the reading. You talk about the writer that he, she uh, had, uh, has written about this. Uh, that how the uh, reading should be done. Uh, like there, the text yeah. must text should, should be in familiar and these things. Uh, sir, we have yeah. we have the honor to have a, such a considerable time um, uh, and. as um, you you shared lots of precious informations and experiences sir again uh, uh, thank you so very much uh, and we uh, and wish we wish you uh, a good health and blessings uh, thanks for your time sir so do you do you think that we should uh, wind up now uh, sir actually we have should already we... uh, yes sir sir we are about okay, to wind up the sir. end of our time Yes, sir. So, okay, so are... can I have a few minutes? Can I have a few of minutes? Course, or of course, is sir, it all of course. already over? Of course, sir. You, uh, you. Uh, thank you. you. Let me. Have let me... a winding note. 
Okay, thank you. Just give me five minutes and I will finish or give oh. me to, as you like. Oh, okay, sir. Five minutes. It takes five minutes. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Yes, thank sir. you very much. So you see the stages of reading uh, are that we give a pre-reading uh, session to the students and that is that the students uh, they do like uh, they do some uh, already some uh, pre-reading session in which we uh, we let them discover or let, let them guess something so that they are ready or they are made ready or they are stimulated to read the text uh, this means that they should be they should be made ready to read it then there is while reading in that activity students are just reading and they are going through the text as they like sometimes vertically sometimes horizontally they are not guided by the teacher that they have to read this line or that line let them read it and they are given some some information so that they can uh, do it as much quickly as possible then uh, they after exploring this they they you know come back uh, uh, post reading is that they you know what they do is that they may do some speaking on it or they may do some writing on it or they may be further guided to read it so this is a uh, uh, you know they can in, infer from the text etc etc so here the point is that the reader the reading must be a pleasing experience the job of the reading teacher is therefore to make the students good readers he uses the classroom time to introduce good, interesting pieces of text to be followed by students outside the classroom. They go back and they read it further. And he facilitates reading for his students. And then he trains his students the reading techniques in such a manner that slowly and gradually they become good readers in the foreign language or in any yeah. language. It can be in, in their own yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like a gradual process. You cannot put someone into a hard text at first. It will discourage him and disappoint him and he will um, straight away leave with the reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So slowly they will discover themselves and the text and they will try to find more interesting, more interesting text. So in this way, we are making our task very interesting to the students. They will study here, they will go outside. And then you can also he say, he say the accommodate vague reading. Sometimes they don't understand, so don't worry about understanding everything. It's important. So he said that the, the good idea is that never read the text to students, never explain the text. No need to associate reading with exercises, but do it with activities which make them read it. And in this way, uh, the activity should be such simple, that they, especially in the beginning. So we 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 need not mix up the reading skill with other experiences and so much so that the failure in another skill should not be associated with this and the end is that the male female students may have different interesting experience interest experiences so promote their kind of interest that they want to have and that's it we have ultimately the reading experience should be recognize the text uh, interact with the text, comprehend the text, acting where necessary. This is proven by research and this is proven the, by the acts of the companions of the Prophet. Peace be upon them. And we can make library visits, book exhibitions, book prizes, book clubs, book appraisals, and show the importance of books. And that's all for today. And we pray at the end that Rabbi Zidin Ilma. There are certain references thank given here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you them. so much. Sir, uh, you, you have uh, You're welcome. You're taken welcome. out your time, your precious time from your busy schedule. We are so much grateful. No, I am I, I feel good that I am mm, contributing good. to the cause. That uh, is I so hope the audience have enjoyed the session and they have a lot to uh, got a lot to know. And thank you so much, sir, again. Uh, Welcome. We are winding up the session, sir. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, thank you. Assalamu alaikum.